Hi, I'm Justin, G0KSC of Innov Antennas and the G0KSC.co.uk website. Today we're going to continue with our videos on uh, Easy NEC or Easy NEC, the antenna modeling package. And uh, today we're going to open up and just have a feel around the software and some of the functionality that's within. If you haven't already reviewed the first video explaining the version types and the version numbers, I would recommend you do that just because it might be the case that on some of the models that we run in these uh, tutorials you would see some slightly different results to uh, in your package to what you would see here uh, and that, that would explain the reasons why those differences may um, occur. Also I've had some questions since the last one. Uh, one of those was the speed of computer that's needed for antenna modeling. Well, when you're running at this kind of level, with just wires only base windows, it's not uh, a problem. Um, generally, speed isn't going to be an issue. Uh, when it uh, when you're you're moving on to some of the um, uh, antenna applications such as HFSS, which I also use, where every aspect of the antenna is being modelled, including booms, insulators, coax cables, then we're running into several hours worth of processing uh, for any particular run rather than a few seconds. This uh, computer will seem quick. It's a Dell 7600 workstation with 32 Xeon cores and 256 gigabytes of RAM. So it does work well. The second one uh, that I had question-wise with regards to Easy NEC Pro 4, which we're using here, is um, what is the licensing requirements? In the, the first video, I mentioned that with this one, you need to buy the software from uh, Roy Llewellyn at Easy NEC. And then you also, from the Lawrence Livermore Partnership, which is a, a government-funded organization in the US, you would need to buy the NEC4 or NEC5 license. Uh, for this software to run, it's not just a straightforward install. It needs a software key that plugs into the computer as well. So moving on to uh, the basis of the antenna, and we're going to keep these fairly short as possible uh, as well. So just five or six minutes each time uh, in order that we can um, cover off um, section so that if anybody needs to refer back to a particular point within a, a modeling application they don't have to go too far uh, deep within any one of the videos. So we open a, a package in the usual way, uh, press open, find the, the, uh, the, the file, uh, opening it and then we've got the, uh, the display of Easy NEC here. So on this one, what I would uh, suggest that we do first is to look down this side. Now on this side uh, are the open save as antenna notes that we can save with regards to uh, the antennas. Um, it might be that you're just putting into the notes that this is the first attempt that you've done on that particular uh, application or whatever it is, and that will be saved alongside the antenna itself. But at, at the moment, the, the most important ones that we're going to be looking at are these bottom three. SWR, view antenna, and the um, FF or far field plot. So let's press this button first off and see what occurs. First off, we get a plot of the antenna that we've just opened. Um, this is a holistic view from uh, above the antenna looking down on a horizontally polarized antenna that's in free space. And this is a cut of the, uh, the, the field strength or the, uh, the antenna, how that would look. Um, some people would say, well, you, how do you hear anything signal-wise when you're here compared to here? This is just an indication of field strength, the same field strength for any one point around the antenna. So you can see on a directional antenna like this, rather than it being fairly symmetrical as it would be on an omnidirectional, uh, most of the, the field strength, uh, most of the signal is being pushed or being pulled from in a received perspective from this side on, and that's where the gain is. And the gain of this Yagi is the difference between this point and where this point would be on an omnidirectional dipole if it were sat in the middle here. So um, that's the first, uh, first main point to consider. The second thing that we hear about as well as gain is front to back. Now front to back is the difference between here and here. It's not a reference point from the middle as you would see on a dipole. It's the front 
gain of the antenna against the back. So effectively if you've got a 30 dB front to back on an antenna that has 9, 9 dB of forward gain um, then the front to back of 30 dB on an antenna that has 20 dB of, of forward gain wouldn't perhaps be as, as quite as um, um, suppressed as it would be on the smaller antenna. Next one is to view the antenna and in this one we can see a view of the layout of the antenna itself. Now you might notice that I'm uh, moving that around somehow just from moving the mouse. Well in EasyNeck if I uh, right click and hold and then move the mouse I can move the orientation of the antenna uh, in free space like this. Now there are a number of things that we can see within this as well. There's a black line, there's red dots, there's numbers and there's pink curves. So what do all these represent? Well if we look at this um, and we look at the view window and view objects and I'm just going to pull this to one side here. If I click and unclick the axis you can see that this Z, Y and X axis disappears. So that what that does is that gives us a, a, some help as far as orientation is concerned. The next one is currents. If I take the current uh, label off you can see that those pink lines appear. So what this is telling us is that these pink lines are um, a representation of current distribution through those elements. And if you want to get a, a bigger delta or to see more what the differentiation is between those currents then you can move this line here. I'm dragging this with my mouse now uh, and raise the intensity of those so you can see just how much current is carried in each of these elements and, and what the difference is um, between those elements in the antenna. And again by holding the mouse right mouse button down and moving it I can orientate the antenna to see at different angles where that would be. So back to the um, objects window again. I'm going to take that off for the moment. Now segmentation dots. Segmentation dots or segments themselves we're going to talk about in uh, a little later on in the importance for these segments to be as close as they can to be the same size in each element and this is an important and very common mistake. If you have an antenna like this one where it has uh, the rear element is over a meter long uh, the front element is well under a meter long if you had the same number of segments in each of these elements the distance or size of each of those segments in the last end, uh, element would be much smaller than what they are in the first or the reflector. So again that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. So if we take that out we've now just got the wires themselves and then the wire numbers they can be uh, taken away just from that simple click as well. But I'm going to put those back in for a moment and move this over here uh, and then just talk about the last one which is this red circle. This red circle is the feed point. It indicates the point where the coax cable is going to be connected. Now we can change that uh, as we can with any of these um, uh, sections along here through uh, looking at uh, the, the sources. And in, in this case, in Easy, Easy Neck or Easy NEC, the source is the point where the coax connects. So where it says wire 2 here, if we were to change that source to say number 3, and press return you can see now it's actually moved to what is in fact the first director. That wouldn't work but this is just for demonstration purposes so we're going to put that now to number two again and move it back to where it should be which is the uh, the, the driven element position uh, itself. So that's, um, that's the antenna layout so we press the plot again and we see our antenna as we did first off. I'm now going to use the third of these buttons which we spoke about and that's the SWR plot. So at the moment we're looking at an SWR between 144 and 144.6 with a step size of, size of 0 0.05 megahertz. So when I press run, it number crunches for a while and then we get a, 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 an indication as to what the SWR is going to look like on that antenna over that particular range. So that's a very, very br brief and swift overview of opening and viewing an antenna in EasyNEC. And uh, in the next one, we'll drill into a little bit more detail and look in the wires window.